When I was a kid, I hated reading. So when we would go to the library, I would always just check out cookbooks so that I could flip them through and ogle the different photos of foods instead of actually reading. Now I'm adult and I somehow once again find myself surrounded by interesting looking cookbooks. But this time I host a cooking show so I actually have some sort of motivation to use them for cooking. It's honestly pretty hard to settle on just one cookbook because I do have a number of very promising looking options, but I settled on Mr. Food because he just looks like a trustworthy guy. Is Mr. Food a real person? Not sure. For all I know, he could just be some handsome cookbook model. And you know, you always hear the smacking of their lips just before we hear the, oh, it's so good. Regardless, I now present to you two different Mr. Food dishes, starting with Quick Lamb Borg Guin Gnan. Borg Borgwignan. Quick Lamb Borg Borgwignan. Borgwignan. I've never prepared lamb before. In fact, I can't really recall a time when I've even eaten it. So to me, it feels like a very fancy, almost exotic meat that should be handled with care. Other than the protein though, the ingredients are pretty basic and were easily located at my local food store. I did get a little concerned when it came to the frozen pearl onions though. The recipe calls for them to be thawed, but the packaging is very clear with its insistence that the onions remain frozen. I eventually decided to trust the culinary direction of Mr. Food and thaw the onions in a bowl of room temperature water. Garlic is one of my favorite ingredients. I'm always happy to see it. Some people say that life is like an onion, but I like to say that life is like a garlic. Okay, smelling garlicky. How do I mince? It's probably like a... One cup canned beef broth. smell like I would expect it to. It smells very wet dog-ish. It took me a little while to find a dry red wine. I know nothing about wine and none of the We're bottles right. are actually labeled as wet or dry, so it was a bit of a pain to locate. After all that effort to open up this bottle of dry red, this glass of wine still seems just as wet as any other that I've had. Eh. After getting together the rest of the ingredients and making a silly face for reasons I don't quite remember, it's time to start the quick lamb Borgwignon. Mr. Food calls for one pound of lean, boneless leg lamb, but I was only able to buy it in a three and a half pound portion, and the idea of accurately paring down the meat to a single pound immediately stressed me out. Well, I don't have a food scale. I don't have any scales. I don't know how much anything weighs. I settled on just doing a rough estimate, slicing out a single slab of meat and just hoping that Mr. Food will forgive me if it's not exactly weighs a pound. Step one, trim fat from lamb. I'd say that looks pretty lean. I'm actually kind of proud with how that looks. The instructions aren't quite clear if the fat will be used later on in the recipe, so I stored it on a little plate and set it aside. Place meat between two sheets of plastic wrap. 
and flatten to one half inch thickness. Mr. Food suggests using either a meat mallet or a rolling pin. I tried both and the meat mallet is clearly the way to go. The rolling pin was really ineffective. It stuck to the plastic wrap, making it hard to use. And also it's just way less badass than hitting your food with a hammer. Okay, not quite half an inch, closer to an inch, but uh, you know, that's what's gonna happen. It's just what's gonna happen. Cut lamb into one inch pieces. Bourgeois, bourge, bourguignon. Bourguignon. Smells are an essential part of the cooking experience. The nose is like the ears of the face. And it was at this point in the process that my kitchen began to be filled with the delicious, hearty aroma of raw lamb meats. It smells gross. Okay, here's my pile of meat pieces. Uh, that's a lot of meat. Now it's time for my favorite part of the process. It's time to cook the meats. My lovely little lamb lumps. Cooking the lamb meat definitely improved its scent, though the pile of meat chunks bubbling in their own juices isn't the most visually appealing thing that I've ever seen. That's because Mr. Food is the most visually appealing thing I've ever seen. Okay, smells? Okay. Looks? Okay. 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 With the meat hunks removed and out of our way, it's time for the thawed pearled onions to get their time in the spotlight. Weird looking little guys. We only need a cup of them, and although I did consider being adventurous and eating one right out of the bag, I decided to do this instead. Uh, I hope you enjoy. The onions are then cooked in the leftover meat juices, and eventually garlic joins the party too. I feel very focused, uh, very determined to do a job well done and to make Mr. Food proud of me. After separating the little onions, I add the wine and beef broth to the pan, but neglect to get any meaningful video footage of it. Well, it smells pretty good. I don't know about the wine and the beef broth, kind of questionable, uh, but you know, could be good. I gotta say, I still don't know what to expect. I don't know what a Borgwinignan is. Is it a soup? Is it, uh, is it a soup? Oh, I'm supposed to combine these ingredients separately. In a separate bowl, I combined this morning's leftover coffee, some flour, tomato paste, and some rare spices together. Then add that concoction to the skillet. Cook, stirring constantly until sauce is thickened. Add lamb and onion moisture mixture. I'm not really sure how to tell that the sauce has been thickened. The sauce looks pretty thick. Guess I'm not sure how thick the sauce is supposed to be because I still don't know what this is supposed to be. Bourguignon. Um, add lamb and onion. I'll just do it. I'll just do it. I don't know. That looks right. I'll just do it. Since I really have no idea what I'm making, I really have no idea how to know if I've made it correctly. Does this look good? Does this look as it's supposed to? Bourguignon. I feel like the meat is gonna be overcooked. I've been cooking the meat for so long. 
I was, in fact, overcooking the meat, and instead of listening to my own internal reasoning, I decided to stick to the recipe and allow the lamb chunks to simmer and slowly but surely overcook. It is perhaps my greatest mistake of this entire video, and a great reminder that the number one rule of cooking is also the number one rule of, of life. Believe in yourself. Yeah! Okay, so the beef borgna, borgna is uh, done. I guess I'm just supposed to scoop it out. It looks pretty good, smells pretty good. Uh, it looks like I should have, I don't know, rice or something to put this on top of, but uh, empty bowl will do. Big concerns. Concerned about the meat being tough. Concerned that I will hate these onions. Well, that's not bad. Meat's a little... Sandy? Like it tastes good, but the meat definitely gets a little grainy as I eat. I don't think that's bad though, that's pretty good. Meat is just slightly on the tough side. Um, I don't know how to describe the flavor. It tastes of meat. The lamb was clearly overcooked and I was clearly overwhelmed at taste testing a dish so foreign to me. Now you're supposed to just eat the onions, right? These little tiny little onions. Those aren't bad either. They're like little onion grapes. The onions actually ended up providing some juiciness to the dry, overcooked lamb, which was welcome, and the sauce was also pretty tasty. If there was one thing I thought was certain, it said I was not going to like the onions, but I actually like them with the lamb. It's not bad. But honestly, the grittiness of that overdone lamb was just too much. I should have followed my instincts and cooked it for less. I think that when you're cooking, sometimes it's not always as simple as just following the directions. Sometimes you have to react to what's happening in front of you, and I'm really lacking in that ability. I'll stick to the directions even when I'm actively sitting there going, hmm, that meat sure is cooking too long. Pretty tasty. I don't know that I would serve it to someone. I don't know that it, I'm confident enough to serve it to someone, but if I, if I knew what it was, if I knew if, if it's supposed to go on rice, is it supposed to go on a bread? It feels like it's missing something. <laughs> Round out your meals with these versatile dishes. They're so tasty, you uh, may be tempted to make them the main course. Well, we're gonna have to make them the main course today because the lamb was obliterated. None of these ingredients are rare or hard to find. The most obscure one is probably the chicken-flavored bouillon granules, but even so, those are pretty easy to locate. I did end up omitting the green bell pepper in this recipe, but that's just because I don't like green bell pepper. Feel free to include it when you cook it, though I will judge you silently. Let's cook some pork sausage. Cook sausage and next five ingredients, Dutch oven, oven, medium heat. Here we go. I'm not so crazy about the idea of celery in this dish. I don't think I'm too crazy about cooked celery in general, but Mr. Food also included garlic, mushrooms, and Worcestershire sauce, which are two of my all-time favorite ingredients, so there's real potential here. And one of the reasons I picked this dish is that it includes wild rice, which is my favorite kind of rice because I'm kind of a wild boy. Instead of making my own though, I just grabbed a bag of microwave rice from Uncle Ben because I am also kind of a lazy boy. Okay, rice has to be done. Stir it in, put it in a bowl. <laughs> well, much like the first recipe, I found myself growing curious about what is dressing exactly. 
I know ranch, but as far as the food that's called dressing, I'm not quite sure how to accurately define it. It's like uh, bread, seasoned bread chunks. Dressing is one of those things that I think of holiday meals. Don't you stir, stir for turkey with dressing? I'm just kind of looking at it as a uh, rice bowl, basically. Despite the fact that this recipe was a side dish while the lamb was a fancy schmancy one, the sausage rice dressing just seems to have more going for it. What well, huh? Meat, rice, veggie, and shroom, it really is a complete experience. I kinda wish there was a little more rice. I wish it was heavier on the rice, but I mean, I know I didn't use accurate sizes of almost anything in this recipe, so yeah. I think it's pretty good. It's a little celery-ish for my taste, a little, little too heavy on the celery, but I do really like the pork sausage and the wild rice and the mushrooms. Would have loved about twice as much wild rice, at least, it needs way more wild rice. It's basically a meat bowl as is, which does sound like something I'd be into, but I was kind of looking forward to the rice, honestly. Pretty good, I would maybe make the lamb again Probably not this. And so concludes my Mr. Foods. The cookbook is not too bad. I actually enjoyed both recipes more than I expected and they'd have been even better if I had cooked everything properly. I will say though that I could have used a few more pictures of the food. There's a lot of pictures of Mr. Food in here, but of the actual recipes, uh, most of it is just text. So if you're planning on making a cookbook, be sure to put enough food pictures in there. They're very important. I'd like to take a moment now to thank Mr. Food himself for the inspiration for this video. His inviting smile and colorful presentation really added spice to what would otherwise have been just a cookbook of cheap and easy recipes. I'll miss you, Mr. Food. I, I love you more than anyone else in this crazy world, Mr. Food, my love. Hi there, my name is Helodicus Freshlin, and this video is sponsored by HelloFresh. You might remember me from my appearance on the hit music video for MC Fresh's global phenomenon, Songvertisement. Name my first child after HelloFresh. Well, guess what? That's a true story. My father named me after HelloFresh meal kits because he believed in their effortlessness, sustainability, and of course, their deliciousness. Father always said the meals were so delicious, and that's why he loved them more than me. If only I was as delicious as HelloFresh's easy to prepare recipes are, perhaps my father would have loved me as a true father should. But he's dead now, and all he ever loved was HelloFresh. In his defense, preparing one of these meals is much easier than maintaining a healthy relationship with your children. And it takes a lot less time, too. It also comes with pre-portioned ingredients to make your life simple instead of complicating it by stealing your car and driving it into a light post. I might not have another chance at a relationship with my beloved papa, but you have a chance right now to get a great deal on some HelloFresh. So that's great for you, right? Go to HelloFresh.com and use code BRUTALMOVE16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. That's HelloFresh.com, code BRUTALMOVE16 for 16 free meals and three free gifts. My father may have never loved me, but I bet you're gonna love HelloFresh.